couple of months ago, I published a video about the issues that I'd had with this DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. At the time, I was pretty grumpy about some things it just didn't do very well at all. Now, don't get me wrong, this does an awful lot for the money, but there's some fundamental limitations with this tantalizingly brilliant drone that are really, really annoying. So after four months of mainly commercial use, I thought it would be a good idea to review this again and see if my don't buy message is still relevant and to let you know how DJI have responded. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel and for more videos like this, it's YouTube, you know what to do, subscribe, like, comment and hit the bell for notifications. In the last four months, I've had lots of great comments on my don't buy video pointing out some other issues with the M2EA and of course where I was wrong. And also some people are using the M2EA with great success. And I'll have to give DJI credit for answering the question that I had had, but I'll cover all that a little bit later. I came very close to cutting my losses and just selling this, but a few months later, it's actually paid for itself, despite not being quite what I'd expected. Now, I have to fess up, I was totally wrong about the zoom on the RGB camera. In my excitement to get this ordered for an upcoming project on pre-release, I missed a small print in the specs and sort of assumed it was like the old Enterprise Jewel and had an optical zoom on the RGB camera. It doesn't. Although this has a 48 megapixel sensor, it doesn't have an optical zoom. It's got a four times lossless zoom, which is totally different. It'll zoom four times lossless at 1080, only by effectively moving the visible area around the larger area of the sensor. It's like a sort of electronic 1080 window moving over the sensor area. Anyway, I was wrong and as it turns out zooming at 1080 was fine for the inspections that I was doing and to be honest I just wanted more for the sake of it. The IR radiometric camera is fantastic for the money and I've used it on more jobs than I'd expected. The majority of comments I got on how great this is came from people who bought it for security and some search and rescue and I totally get that. The IR and the visible views on the smart controller on here are stunning and being able to see them side by side and zoom in makes it perfect for that sort of operation. And weirdly, even though I'm not a thermographer, that's how I've been using the IR camera on this. Not for generating detailed thermographic survey reports, because I'm not actually qualified, but to use the smart controller display working with the subject expert standing next to me measuring hot spots and points of interest on the fly. They're looking over my shoulder or on a separate monitor and they quickly drill into problem areas on solar panels or they're measuring temperatures at the top of tall chimneys. I'm mostly using the screen capture or the video screen recording on here, which is really easy to do. Another thing this is really good at is generating very high resolution images for land surveys, industrial roof inspections, orthomosaics and 3D models. The large sensor on this camera means a survey flown at 50 meters gives you a ridiculous level of detail to zoom into on the final stitched image or 3D model. And although in the past I've always used the drone deploy app as the controller, the pilot app that runs on this smart controller is actually pretty good for surveys, 3D models and those sort of missions. It's not quite as good as Drone Deploy but it's very usable and it runs on the smart controller. Drone Deploy doesn't and it never will. DJI reached out to me with comments on my video so I decided to fire off a load of questions just to find out what the score was. So let's check out their responses. The saved image on the SD card doesn't reflect the zoom level of the camera and what's shown on the smart controller. Will this be fixed? And their answer is, the photos taken by the camera after zooming are still one times and it is because the function has not been launched. It will be launched in the future, it will, sorry, it will be launched in the future firmware update. So please stay tuned to our official website. 
The last firmware update was in March 2021. It'll be great to see this fixed, but I suspect it won't be happening anytime soon. So question two. The camera controls are fixed with no manual adjustment of the shutter and aperture. And they've answered. Sorry, M2EA cannot change the aperture and shutter speed because the visible light camera defaults to auto and has no electronic shutter related parameters. So the shutter speed is automatically adjusted and cannot be changed. Well, that sounds like a cop out to me for not fixing it. Surely all that's handled in the firmware and isn't a fundamental restriction of the camera mechanics, the sensor or the hardware. So question three. Why JPEG image only and no RAW RGB format? The photo shooting formats supported by M2EA are as follows. Visible light photo format, JPEG. Infrared photo format, RJPEG. The photo format of these two cameras in the app is replaced by JPEG. That is, although the display is JPEG, the infrared videos, sorry, the infrared photos are in RAW format and have temperature information. Well, that's not really an answer, is it? They're just telling us what we already knew. So on to question four. Can we have more video formats and FPS settings frames per second? The definition of M2EA focuses on taking pictures, so there are fewer video formats supported, but we will give feedback to the engineer on your needs. Yeah, that's a maybe then. Can we have support for the image format in the DJI Thermal SDK? And they've answered M2EA support for DJI Thermal SDK has been included in the plan and upgrade preparations may be made in the near future. Related information will be posted on the official website first. You should continue to pay attention to the official website information. Hmm, if this camera was added to the thermal SDK. It means we can write our own reporting or file format conversion software. This opens a lot of possibilities. Again, their answer is a definite maybe. Question six, are there any improvements to the thermal analysis tool application planned? It crashes using the export function and the screen fonts and display are overlapped and jumbled. And their answer is, sorry for the inconvenience caused to your use. In this situation you mentioned, we suggest you do the following. Set the default software for opening Word documents to Word software. And number two, at present we have verified that Office 2013 and Office 2016 may be used stably, but there may be some small bugs in Office 2019. It's recommended that you can switch to the recommended office version. Doesn't scan. Regarding the display problem, the display will return to normal after you adjust the resolution of your computer. This issue has, has, this issue, it's very hard to read this, this issue was given rise to the compatibility of the resolutions of software and computer. Well, they've apologised at least, but that's no real excuse for such a crappy software implementation. Who's got eight year old versions of Office lying around to make this work? It'd be easier and much better to develop the code to create PDFs that can, they don't have any reliance on really old desktop software. Give me the source code and I'll fix it for free. And why isn't this software cross-platform? After all, the DJI Assistant is written using Electron so it could run on Macs and Windows. And they've tagged some random comments on the end. It is not because an aircraft has an, air, an RTK module that it can be used to survey a map. Furthermore, we should classify the surveying and mapping according to its degree or purpose. None of this really scans. For example, whether you want to use it for accurate and industrial level surveying and mapping or just want to experience how it works. We have never publicly announced that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance can achieve the effect as accurately as Phantom 4 RTK. They're answering a question that I didn't ask about the RTK module that I don't have anyway, and I've heard it's mostly terrible at getting and maintaining an NTRIP connection. Now I do know something about this because part of my day job is developing apps that use the NTRIP network so I understand the intricacies and I can pretty much guess why their implementation has problems. 
My interpretation of this excuse is, yep, it's got RTK, but don't expect it to be fit for purpose, and it's just there for you to play with. Very strange. What can we conclude from all this? Well, my feeling is there may be a firmware update to fix a few of these, but I doubt it'll be anytime soon because the M2EA isn't exactly a big market. DJI have a habit of creating fantastic stuff and then just dropping it, presumably because it's not making enough money. And we can't really cry about that because we know it happens. The M2EA does have its place and as I found out, can still earn me money commercially. And to answer my original question, do I think this is worth buying after four months use? <laughs> it's a definite yes, no, and maybe, <laughs> sorry. There's still too many problems with this to give it a firm yes. Some things it does really well and is very impressive, but it's still let down by some serious issues and limitations that I'm guessing won't change. If you don't need manual camera controls or the other video and image formats, and you need good quality IR radiometric images for spot checks or search and rescue or security, all at a sensible price, then this is gonna be right for you. But if you want control over the camera, image formats compatibility with industry standard tools for reporting and image delivery, don't buy it. But what are the alternatives? The DJI M300 does everything I want with so many great sensor options, but it's mighty expensive and you need a good business case for it. I flew a 300 a couple of months ago and it's fantastic. It actually flies sort of like a big Mavic and is so much better than my M210 was. But that's another whole disaster story. The Autel Evo 2 Dual 640T is an interesting option. The thermal camera looks to be similar to the M2EA. It's a bit more expensive and has longer flight times, but there's no accessories, although you do get a couple of extra batteries included. And it doesn't have a smart controller yet. And now, I use this DJI Smart Controller for my Mini 2 Mavic M2EA P4P and Inspire, and it's become completely invaluable. If I could transport back in time, six months, knowing what I know now, I'd have bitten the bullet and bought an M300. No question. It's got a longer shelf life than the M2EA, but for now, reluctantly, this is working for me. I'll be really interested to hear your views in the comments, especially if you're an M2EA or a 640T owner, or DJI. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Like a river running to you yeah.